Are you excited to go DIY? Are we going to have the best time ever? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the place where I solve home decor dilemmas with a DIY. Not all projects are as simple as they seem. You always run into issues. My orbital sander just died. And this channel takes you through the entire process. Problems. I actually need a different setup. Hiccups. I just broke it. And celebrations. There's just so many possibilities, which is what I love about this. To show you what I went through to make these DIY projects. These are the diaries of DIY Danny. Of course, if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do because I got a lot of DIY adventures coming your way and you don't want to miss it. Today's home decor dilemma is with my friend, Alexandra Gator, who you might know as my co-host from Buy or DIY. She also has her own YouTube channel where she does beautiful home decor makeovers. I've linked her channel down below, go check her out. But today I'm in her space solving a home decor dilemma. She's got a awkward slanted roof and she has lots of store-bought shelving on that wall, but nothing that can fit into that corner space that's kind of awkward. And she came to me with the request to make a DIY custom wall shelf that'll fit into that slanted wall. So I headed over to her space to check it out. Let's roll the tape. You know what the problem with Alexandra's space is though? She lives in the middle of downtown. So getting to her house is a nightmare. Just traffic. Oh, Ryan Reynolds is the face of Armani. What a stud. It's just all over. Oh, hey stud. I need to get out more. Hello. It smells so nice in here. It's like fun and fresh. Fun and Fresh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is the wall. Yeah, so I think these totally work and I really love them. I had these in my old house and we wallpapered the back. The difference was we had four of them. So there was a lot more space yeah. for it to all breathe. And now I feel like it just looks really, really cluttered. All right, so let's talk about the challenges with this space. First of all, we have a slanted wall. That's obvious, that's number one. <laughs> the second challenge is that being in an old home like Alexandra's, those walls aren't perfectly straight. So regardless of the measurements that I take, I could run into problems where certain boards are going to need to be longer than others. I'm going to have to be very careful and maybe overcompensate for some pieces. As long as the boards were too long, I could still cut them down so that they would fit in the space properly. My best plan was make sure I had as many measurements as I possibly could. Cross fingers and hope for the best. Okay, so let's talk about the colors. Yeah. The inspiration was the rug. And then we're thinking one of these top two colors or white. So it's either one, two yeah. or white. I want this room to be really like serene and minimal. Well, everything is very colorful. And if we go white and then you style it yeah. lovely as you would with all your beautiful, colorful decorations, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. It'll really be nice on the floor too. Cause it's like yeah. really dark. Wait, can I just say something? Yes. This is the first time anyone's ever done anything to my space. Ever? Ever. Ever. Wow. I know and I'm so excited wow. because usually I'm the one making over the space. Do Don't it. Don't screw it up, Danny. <laughs> so I had a really great meeting with Alexandra yesterday, as you guys saw. And I've been doing some planning because building something like this isn't as simple as just build a shelf on a wall. <laughs> so Alexandra has that angle part on her wall. The first task was to figure out what exactly is that angle because that's how I'm gonna have to cut the boards that fit into that space. So to do that, we're gonna have to do some trigonometry. And I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but my partner, Jeffrey does. So I politely asked him to do math and he did. <laughs> and we determined that it was 35 degrees. 38 degrees. We determined that it was 38 degrees. I literally had no idea what you were doing. It was like hieroglyphs. Huh? The second challenge we have is that I want to build this out of one by 12 boards, but the largest board I can source is a 96 inch, which means that I'm going to have to kind of build this in sections. So we had to use some math paper. 
and draw this wall out so we could determine how much wood we had to buy. So essentially we're going to need 11 1 by 12 by 8s to do this entire wall, which is actually pretty good. Price wise we're probably looking at about $300 for wood. And honestly, if we're doing an entire wall of shelving, I think that's a pretty good price. So I'm off to the lumber store. I'm gonna go pick up some wood. The plan was to go to Home Depot and buy a three quarter inch knotty pine boards. But as soon as I got there, the plan kind of changed a little. Ooh, kind of a game changer, guys. I didn't really even think about this as an option before, but there's this melamine shelving. It's still like a particle board, as you can see here, but it's half the cost of the knotty pine, and I think I can make this work. Here was the upside about going with that melamine board. It's 5 eighths of an inch, not 3 quarters, so it's not as thick but it felt pretty sturdy. Second, it's already a finished board, which means I don't have to do any sanding and I don't have to do any painting. <laughs> what a win for DIY Dana. We're moving and shaking, people, moving and shaking. I took it to the cutting center and got all the long pieces cut so that it would fit into my car. And once again, hatchback for the win. I was able to fit all 12 boards in the back of my car. We were off to the races. I'm gonna get my workspace set up. Once I got home, I was ready to cut all of my vertical pieces. I had to cut a lot of vertical pieces, so I set up something called a jig where I just took three boards and a lot of clamps and I set it up on one side of the miter, so all I had to do was take the boards, line it up, and cut. That's what it sounded like. It's not what it sounds like at all. So once I had all the verticals cut, the plan was to drill all of my pocket holes. But alas, I ran into a small hiccup. As you do, it happens. I realized that my pocket hole jig is set up to drill pocket holes for board thickness that are one inch or more. So I actually need um, a different setup. Um, there's a piece that fits into this that's built for drilling pocket holes into boards that are one inch and smaller. And I don't have that. Of course I don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna go pick that up tomorrow and hopefully this new setup works. I will see you tomorrow. So yesterday I ordered all the missing pieces that I needed to complete this project. Okay, let's see what we got. First thing that I ordered was two of these corner clamps. This is gonna be great when I start building all my verticals because it actually builds vertical pieces upward. So, I ordered two of those. Second product. Dun, 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 dun. Yay! This is what I needed so that I could drill through my 5 8 inch board. So this is huge! Yay! And then these paint grade pocket hole plugs. You can actually order white plastic ones, which would have looked great, but they're so expensive. So I thought I would just order a bunch of these paint grade versions, and I'm just gonna paint them white so that it fills in the holes to make it look a little bit more seamless. What's a DIY project without a little painting, am I right? the best DIY project in the world. So I had the correct jig mount, I got going on my pocket holes. So, we have our verticals. The plan is I'm going to be drilling a hole here and a hole here, and then on the other side, I'm going to do in the middle. I'm hoping that if I do two here and then one that goes in here, I'm just helping to disperse the weight and making it more secure. One down, a bunch more to go. The only one issue that I saw with the melamine is that as you cut it, it kind of rips and leaves like little cracks on the top coat of the board. So it looks kind of ugly. Now I sanded all the edges down, but if you were looking for a piece that's just like a nice, beautiful cut, this could cause some challenges. Four. I'm back in Miss Alexandra Gator's space. Say hi. <laughs> that was the most awkward hi. We are going to take down her shelves and we're gonna do some extra measuring because you always measure twice, build once. 
Amen, sister. Right? Amen. You taught me that. I mean, not that I build anything, but if I was to build. We're here for you. Yeah, no. You have a lot of stuff on these shelves, so um, yeah. we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. So, okay. Let's get everything out of the space and then we can start to measure. Okay. Okay. Lengarian Leviosa. No. How do you say it? Lengarian Leviosa. It's not Leviosa, it's Leviosa. The 500 best value ones in the LCBO. That is not mine. <laughs> what do you think I am? We did it! Empty wall. So this time when I was making my measurements, I actually had the general tier heights of where I wanted those shelves to sit. By understanding that, I was able to mark them on the wall and then measure across. This would allow me to just get a more accurate sense of how long my boards needed to be and the cuts that I needed to make. One measurement I needed to make sure that I did get was these baseboards and measuring the height of them because when I go to put the shelving in, I'm actually going to have to make the bottom shelf shorter um, to compensate for that piece. So I'm going to measure how far it comes off the wall and just how high it is. I'm looking probably at two inches off the wall. Hmm. Well, I think we have all the measurements we need for today. So got all my measurements, I was happy, and I walked away knowing that I could make smart choices, smart cuts. The next step at this point is I need to make more pocket holes, um, but this time on the horizontal pieces that are going to connect two pieces together. And after that, then I'm coming back here on the weekend and we're gonna install these. Big, big day this weekend, big day. A big day, you know, a big day. Big day coming for you guys. Okay, uh, okay, well, bye-bye. Day five. So the plan today was to cut all of my boards to the measurements that I double checked at Alexandra's and get all of those mitered angle cuts cut. So I used the miter saw to cut all the angles at 38 degrees. Nice angle, bro. So I ended up running into one small challenge where I guess I wasn't really paying attention and I ended up um, making one of the boards into a mitered angled cut that wasn't meant to be mitered. Unfortunately, this led me to have to go back to the hardware store to buy one more piece of melamine board. Luckily, because I was working with melamine board, this was a very inexpensive fix. But again, if you're working with an expensive material, that could really be detrimental to your budget. So pay attention. Don't do what I did. You know what I'm saying? Remember when I was measuring those baseboards at Alexandra's? Now I need to account for those. So I'm gonna be taking a total of four inches off my bottom board because the base of the baseboard is two inches. So I gotta account for that. So I'm taking off a total of four inches on that bottom board and then I'm going to rip the back of the board two inches so that it will fit in the back as well. And then we need to account for the height on the uprights. So I'm gonna use the jigsaw and I'm gonna take out a piece to account for the baseboard. Now there's room for the baseboard. Sad news, I drilled one hole and it had like a bit of a oopsie. When I was measuring it, I measured the other side of the board, so that's my bad. But that's okay because I'm going to be buying caulking anyways, so I'll just fill it in with caulking. And honestly, I feel like you would like never see it. So, shh, even though she's probably going to watch this video and then she'll know. <laughs> Don't hate me, I'm trying so hard. So once that was done, I packed up the car and I was ready to go for the next day. I can't believe I fit that entire shelving system in my car with all the tools. Hatchback for the win once again. See you tomorrow. <gasps> it's so early. 
by early, I mean it's like early for a Saturday morning. 6.24 a.m. I just really need some coffee. Day six, it's been a long process and boy was I feeling the burn. So I just arrived at the hardware store. I'm gonna buy a new melamine board. I'm also going to buy some caulking and then move on with my day. See you soon. Guys, Danny's here and they're bringing up the wood for the build. Okay, load one coming in. That's the last of my bookshelves going downstairs. Bye. Bye. How many loads of these do you need to do? Simple view. I feel like I should probably help you. Right? Yes. Instead of standing here filming. <laughs> Two things I know. One, I am not in shape. Two, a lot of stairs to your space. I'm happy it's done. I think I need to take off like everything now. So hot. Let's start building some shelves. Woo! The hard part is done. Now all we need to do is install. I've got help today. Say hi, Jeffrey. Hello. And I got, yeah, you're here. Don't even. <laughs> it was time to assemble. Of course, as soon as we started to assemble, it became very evident that some of my measurements weren't perfect. It failed. Well, are you sure it's supposed to go there? Is that the 50? Guys, those walls are not straight. Four, four, perfect. And no matter how many times that I cut and I measured and I measured, um, it still didn't work out perfectly. Even the angle's not right. Yeah. This is why I totally recommend when you're gonna do something like this, install it in the space. All of the 38 degree mitered angle cuts were technically wrong. The way that we had calculated it originally was we had done it respective of the 90 degree angle. We had the angled wall, this part here, was where we calculated that angle. What we should have calculated was this angle here. So if the wall was nine, oh my God, I need five arms. I'm just gonna draw you guys a diagram. <laughs> so we're cutting some new boards. Nice. Cut the new board. <laughs> it is nice and flush. Way to go, love. High five. How amazing does this look on the wall? So awesome! So much shelf. There's just so many possibilities, which is what I love about this. It was getting close to the end of the day, but we did make a couple design changes on the spot. Alexander wanted to be able to put large pieces of artwork up there, so we decided that we wanted that top shelf to actually be higher. So tomorrow, we're going to add an upright here, and upright on this side, do a small shelf on the top. Alexander can have all of her art here. The second big change was adding more verticals than we had originally anticipated. That melamine board ended up being a little bit more wobbly, so I actually decided to add verticals on the left side of the shelf. That shelf was rock solid. Rock solid. If this was a shelf, this was the rock. Not getting through, you know what I mean? So, coming back tomorrow, finish this off. It's gonna be glorious. Day seven. The last day of the DIY. Yay. First things first, we finished out all of the shelves and I started caulking all of the exposed edges. Oh God, that caulking makes it like so nice. Uh, uh, wow, so good. I did run into one small snag that day. All of those plugs that I had originally purchased to fit into all the pocket holes didn't quite end up working the way that I hoped for. But all we ended up doing was just painting the inside of the pocket holes white. And honestly, they like disappeared. We just filled in all of the holes. This whole shelf is complete and we are going to style it. Now the fun part begins. Well, for you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what 
a difference those shelves made in her space. It created so much storage and the beautiful part is that it was completely renter friendly. And guys, they weren't complicated to make. I would give this project a DIY rating of three out of five stars. The entire build in itself was not complicated. The complicated part was me not building it in the space. I'm so happy with the way that it turned out and I know Alexander was super happy with the way it turned out. Once again, we leave with a happy client, a happy space, and a happy home. You guys should let me know what you thought. Did you love this project? Did you find it helpful? Or is there anything that you wish I did cover that I didn't? Let me know in the comment section below and I can make sure that I cover that in the future. I got lots of projects coming up this summer, so stay tuned, stay subscribed, and I will see you next time. Thank you.